It's not your fault the schools didn't teach you about personal finance. It fell on the responsibility of your family to teach you, but many of them don't know either. I'm Mitchell Hockenberry, and I'm gonna explain in plain English the seven main points of personal finance. really frustrating to look up personal finance books in Amazon and see so many titles and not knowing which to choose. To further complicate things, you're most likely searching because there's been an event in your life causing you to look for assistance. Perhaps you just started out on your first real job, or getting married, or divorced, or finding yourself in debt, or desiring to buy a home. It really doesn't matter what brought you here. I'm glad you found this video because I'm going to go over the top seven basic personal finance topics. And here they are. Spending plan, saving plan, debt reduction or debt management, long-term savings plan, risk management, end of life planning, and taxes. So let's jump into the first one, then we'll go through all the rest. And the first one is the spending plan. This is referred to as a budget by many, but I prefer the term spending plan because that is what you are deciding, how to spend your money. This step is all about prioritizing what is most important to you in terms of how you spend your money. I prefer the zero dollar plan, it's taking your paycheck and labeling out how you're going to spend your money, all the way down to zero at the end. And I have a great video called How to Budget for more information on that. Number two is the savings plan. This is where you determine how much you need to save up for various wants and desires. Let's say you're looking for let's say you're looking to save for a down payment on a house. You want 20% of the purchase price to put down. So you look at how much you can afford and you multiply it by 20%. How long until you want to buy? Well, divide that number into the 20% and that is how much you need to save each month to hit your down payment number. You do this for all of your savings goals and you add them into your spending plan. Number three, it's the debt reduction or debt management. What I mean is, if you have debt, you are looking to reduce it, ideally to zero. And if you're putting expenses on a credit card and paying off each month, we're really talking about the spending plan in number one. But if you're talking about paying down a car loan or student loans, I look at it as the debt management plan. How well are you managing your debt? If it takes up too much of your spending plan, let's try to eliminate. I have a video called How to Get Out of Debt. You should watch that one next. Okay, number four. It's the long-term savings plan. Many call this retirement planning, but I think that's too confining. Some, like me, may never want to retire. A better way to look at it is from the angle of financial independence. You should be saving and investing for the point in life where you no longer need to work. In other words, you are independent financially. All right, moving along is number five. It's risk management. Another term is just being insured. I like risk management management because it reminds me that we're trying to cover risks to your finances. You can assume some of the risk with your savings or knowing yourself, but you can mitigate the risk by having insurance. The main types you should be looking at and considering are life, disability, long-term care, and then property like your house, your renters, or your auto insurance. Number six is end of life planning or more commonly referred to as estate planning. I like end of life because estate planning brings up an image of having large amounts of money for your heirs. But I believe you need to be looking at a will, a durable power of attorney, and a living will. And you don't need to be rich or have large sums to pass along in order to do this. It is the right thing and I have a video called How to Prepare Your Financial Documents Before You Die. You should watch that. There's even a free ebook in it for you. All right, the last one is taxes or tax planning. You should be proactive with your taxes rather than reactive. Those that just let the year happen and then file taxes are potentially missing out on methods to reduce the amount of taxes you pay. It could mean not owing money or even a refund during tax season. 
That's the high level view of personal finance. You can get into the weeds on each one of these seven topics and I have videos that do just that. I ask you to please subscribe to this channel as it helps us reach more people and be sure to check out my official site personalfinancemadeclear.com for additional resources. And if you haven't watched the video, how to stay on budget and keep from overspending, be sure to watch that one next.